Hello there, my name is Isaac Oster. In this little tutorial series, I kind of want to break down the process of how to get a, a high poly model and a low poly model that already has the UVs set up in Painter. And then uh, this will also cover just kind of a quick crash course in Painter. I've seen a lot of tutorials where there is a uh, pretty good Painter tutorial, but not really the, the part of the process that uh, needs to happen in order for the painter stuff to be set up properly. So uh, I just want to go ahead and, and cover that for you. To begin with, I've got a ZBrush file here. This geometry was created using Fusion 360, which is a really great modeling tool, and it has been dynameshed. Uh, I have another version here. This is the non dynameshed version, and if I zoom in and hit uh, Shift F for uh, polyframe, what you can see is the detail here is actually just sort of uh, tons and tons of little triangles where necessary but otherwise it's it's a uh, pretty standard but this really doesn't bake very well and and uh one of the the results of this even though it looks nice and clean in the high poly what you'll get when you try to bake looks like this so you can see all that artifacting here around that uh, detail that's no good stuff like this whenever whenever you see really long triangles uh, that is usually the result of ugly high poly geometry so what I've done is gone through all of these subtools and dynamesh them. So when it's dynamesh, the geometry can potentially get a lot denser. Uh, so it gets a lot heavier. And in this case, it's, it's, there's some uh, performance lag, but it's nothing that I can't, uh, I can't handle. So I don't really want to go too deep into the dynamesh process. Again, it is only really an issue if you have uh, geometry created in Fusion. Now, if that is a process that you are interested in, I have a tutorial series that covers that in detail at uh, Plural Site. So you'll just need to type my name in here, Isaac Oster, or Advanced Modeling Techniques with Fusion 360, and you will see this tutorial series pop up. Uh, and then if you are interested in the original follow-on to that, which involved Quixel Suite, but this also covers all of the retopology UVs and uh, also setting up in um, Marmoset Viewer, which is, which is pretty useful if you want to have your geometry visible for you know, 3D review on the internet, which is, a, is kind of a, a neat feature. So anyway, I just want to briefly cover what's going on here with the setup. It's very important. So once everything has been dynameshed, uh, you need to assign material ID color. So everything that is going to be one material, for instance, this bottom area here is all going to be the same plastic, and this is going to be some kind of grippy thing. And these pieces here will be some kind of a sh either a shiny plastic or a metal. Sort of magenta color here is going to be... A, a glossy black painted metal. This orange area will be the lens, so on and so forth. So everything that you want to be on one material, you need to make it a specific color and that will aid painter down the road in figuring out where it should assign various materials. To make this as easy as possible for the, uh, the baker to interpret and, and the mask process in painter to happen, you wanna make sure these colors are really far apart. So the easiest way to do that is if I just hit C, I'll, I'll sample this color. You can see I've got 255, which is basically a full white for the red channel and then zero and zero for the blue. For the green, it's gonna be the same, well, 128, 255. Anyway, so, so the idea is you wanna keep this stuff as different as possible. So you shouldn't see any values in here that aren't either zero, 128, or 255. And that way there's just very little ambiguity for instance, I could have this color be just a slightly different red color, and then you, you may run into some some trouble. So anyway, just a, a rule of thumb. Painter's pretty good about that, and you can you can tweak the uh, the tolerance if there if there are any discrepancies in the masking uh, on that uh, at that point in the process. So once you've got your material IDs assigned and your geometry is cleaned up, however it is that you want to do that, everything needs to be named with whatever it is followed by underscore high. So in this case, I've got. Uh, this is the safety here, I think. That's the slide release. That's the trigger frame. And the frame actually has multiple things on it. So it, you don't have to break it up by material ID. It's just how you want this thing to be baked. So what that means is when I bake this, I don't want it. I don't want the baker to see these other objects because they will show up sort of baked into the geometry here of the uh, of the frame. So I want to bake the the uh, the frame here independently. And each one of these things is going to be baked independently. 
the ambient occlusion, I think, takes everything into consideration. Like, it'll look at everything as sort of a unified uh, assembly, but everything else will get baked uh, independently. So I want the, uh, for instance, the light to be baked independently. So it's all got to get named. kind of doesn't matter what you name it, so long as it is consistent from the high to the low poly. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So you can see light high, frame high, slide high, hammer high, etc. So... Once you've got all of this stuff, oh, and also this is just a general uh, a good idea. I see this, uh, uh, students get hung up with this on a pretty, pretty regular basis. They do a bake and they, they get crazy results and they don't know why. Just a thing to double check is make sure your low poly geometry, here's the, uh, the finished retop, lines up with your high poly geometry. It's not unusual to have a scale issue at some point in the export process where something gets screwed up. So if you're getting weird bakes, just check that first. Just import your low poly uh, into the ZBrush scene and, and make sure that everything is lined up. So once that's all confirmed, I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. And then this is a feature that's only available in ZBrush 4R8P3. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you're, if you're looking at this and there's a later release, probably they've got that fixed as well. Uh, and it may be actually available in 4R7, I'm not sure, but uh, I know on P2 it was broken, so just FYI. Uh, but if you go to Z plugin, and then you go to FBX export import. You want to have visible turned on. And then all of the default settings here are probably fine. You want to go ahead and just hit export. And what that'll do is it'll actually export each one of these ind uh, individually. But what you see at the end of that process is just a single FBX file, which is very important. And I will show you why in a moment. But before we get there, I want to hop over to Maya. Now I'm using 2016 here. I, I think it, it's pretty, uh, it doesn't really matter what version you're using. But you'll see, I have the same thing over here. Safety low, slide really slow, everything, except instead of saying high now, we have low. Uh, so that's how Painter is going to match up the geometry. It's gonna say, well, I've got one thing called safety low and I've got one thing called safety high. So I'm just gonna go ahead and exclude everything else. Very important that you get the capitalization matching. ZBrush wants to go ahead and, and capitalize the first letter. So Maya doesn't really care, but it'll break the bake. So make sure that it is exactly the same. The only difference is in Maya, it says underscore low and in ZBrush, it says underscore high. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the geometry. There's a few things that I like to do just to get nice clean bakes. Um, I will typically do my retop in ZBrush and my UVs in uh, Max and then uh, UV layout. And then I bring everything into Maya. It's a maybe a little bit more pieces of software that I need, but it's, uh, I know how to do the retop in ZBrush and I know how to do UVs in Mac. So rather than learning something, uh, I am just mildly inconvenienced. So if you know a different way, please feel free. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as you get nice, clean geometry with uh, decent UVs. There is a couple more steps here that I want to, uh, I want to cover with you, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at that in the next video.